What's going on everybody and welcome back to Comic Breakdown. If you guys are new to the channel, do me a favor and hit that sub button, hit that notification bell, make sure you're not missing any of the awesome content that we have coming out. And with this video, we are jumping into Peacemaker Disturbing the Peace, issue number one. And I think most of us expected this comic to make its arrival. With the Suicide Squad, with the HBO Max TV show, it was only a matter of time before they gave him a solo line. With the writing by Gareth Ennis and the artwork by Gary Brown, we are jumping into the origin story of Christopher Smith, aka Peacemaker. We are going to find out what helped mold him into the person he is today. Really dive into his psyche and figure out who is Peacemaker. Be sure to buy the comic, support the industry, and with that being said, let's dive into this breakdown. Alright gang, so as we dive into this issue number one, we are picking up with Christopher Smith and Dr. Sedgwick. She is a psychiatrist, and Christopher has invited her here today. Sitting at a cemetery, a place that is quiet, it has huge amounts of solitude, a place that Peacemaker truly finds, you know, quote-unquote, peace. But the good doctor has been assigned to him, and he is finally deciding that he wants to meet up, sit down, and have a conversation with her. Because she has been assigned for his psychological profile regarding his application for a new team. And before she gives her approval, there are a couple of things that she really wants to clear up. And so Chris, more than happy to oblige with this, she begins to ask her questions. Starting with the death of his family when he was 8 years old. And Chris remembers that day like it was yesterday. It was beautiful. The sun was shining. The wind was blowing. The birds were chirping. And on this specific day, he was running late, with school running a little bit longer because somebody pulled the fire alarm. But upon his arrival, what he found was his entire family was all dead, every single one of them. This was a mass suicide homicide, with his twin siblings in the washer and dryer, them throwing the baby in the microwave. The wife's head is in the oven, and the father is hanging. The two parents leaving a very long letter about their depression, about their hatred of life, and, and just wanting to end everything. At eight years old, this was his first exposure to death. Now, of course, that last part, it wasn't in the file. Stuff like this gets redacted on the daily. And so he calls the authorities. He was given counseling, endless and endless amounts of counseling. He was stuck in foster care. He was given some parents that weren't necessarily the worst individuals in the world. And that is when he met Scooter and Slinky. The two of them had come in to do a bank robbery when him and his foster parents just so happened to be in the bank. And during this robbery, his foster parents, they had been gunned down. With a robbery gone wrong, they grabbed the car keys of his foster father. Taking these keys, they go and steal the vehicle, unknowing to them that we have a little Chris in the back seat, asleep this entire time, not realizing it until it is too late. With him waking up in the back seat, they think about and contemplate even killing him in this situation. But with some hesitation, they think maybe we can bring him along. Maybe we can have him as our own little son and have somebody to do things we don't really want to do. And while they play a very vital part in what makes him him, he only knew them for a couple of weeks. And while they were interesting, they weren't very smart. It was only a matter of time before the authorities caught up with them. And with Chris not being around when the law finally did catch up with them, over the next seven years, Chris lived on the streets. He did what he had to to survive. And when he came of age, that's when he went to the recruiting office. That's when he went to join the army. He joins the infantry. He makes his way through the Rangers, eventually becoming a Green Beret, occasionally working for the SAS until he works his way up to Delta Force. And that really more or less brings him up to date 
on his entire history. Now there's a lot left out, but in that seven years, it was foster care and on the streets, stabbings, and really just living a horrible life, but really opening his eyes to the reality of the world. But this also brings us to Operation Lasting Silence, an operation where he was the only one left alive. Now the operation, it was supposed to go relatively smoothly, but he says it was run by imbeciles. Everyone in it was an imbecile. Bad people being paid off here, bad people being paid off there. Someone's on my side that's an imbecile, they're being paid off. The whole situation is just foobar. But regardless, he goes in, he cleans house before the main force can even get there. He cleaned up shop, he extracted the information he needed to get, and he got out of Dodge. But there was never any sign of his team after that. Six men just disappeared. And as their conversation continues on, we have Peacemaker kind of hinting like, I might kill you if this doesn't go properly. Or at least that's the vibe that she is picking up because of this. And because of that, she lets him know that people know I'm here. Like if you try to kill me because I reject your application, there could very well be consequences and repercussions if anything happens to me. But calming her down, letting her know that he has no intention of doing anything to her, he really wants her to dig down and find out what she really wants from him. And with her coming forward with exactly what she is trying to get at, it's that every single time he goes out on mission, it's like death follows him, all the way back to even his first deployment. No matter who he is teamed up with, there always seems to be some kind of tragic accident. There's always some kind of incident, some kind of accident that happens. And the running theory she has is he might be responsible for all of these deaths. But he lets her know that all of these people, every single team I have worked with, not all of them, but all of the teams that you are talking about, they were corrupt in some way, shape, or form. That is why they didn't come back. That is why they died. That's why they had 50 cal rounds running through their body. Because while they may be working for my side, these are not people that want peace. These are people that cause chaos in this world. And when it comes to the lasting silence operation, the guys he were working with, they were famous. Working for a, a private security company, they had lost control and killed a bunch of the locals. After being acquitted in court, the company hired them back on to do more missions, to do top secret missions. With Peacemaker not being okay with this, he ensured that they would never return. With him going in and completing the mission all by himself, making sure that there is not one single survivor, that team of six members, they went head to head with Bob. Bob being the shark that patrols the waters. And the members of his team, they never stood a chance. But even with all of this chaos, she wants to know how he was able to read her report. Letting her know that after she asked about him, that raised some flags. Those flags going up, eventually they got back to him. And so while she has been investigating him, he has also been investigating her. Not only that, Peacemaker knew that the FBI had approached her, that she is in fact wearing a wire. And off in the distance, we see a van, it is hightailing it out of here, asking for the wire so he can destroy the audio recording. At this point, she's asking, are you going to kill me? Because it looks like you are here to set me up by the FBI. And of course, he has no intention of doing this. Because at the end of the day, she is essentially a good and honest person. But what she can understand, if you knew this whole time, if you knew I was working with the FBI, if you, if you knew I was here to try to get information out of you, why did you go along with it? Not only that, why do you continue to do what you do? Why do you hurt your own teammates? And that's simple for him. He is trying to go after peace. And the only way to do that is to take out these people that are doing bad things in the world. The corrupt, the criminals, all of them alike. And the government, they look the other way. They do that because of the missions that he does for them. The missions that no one else will do, going in and killing anybody necessary to achieve the mission. And he has never, ever failed one single mission. 
And the reality is all of this really wraps back to those early days when he was with the bank robbers. He got a true sign of what people can do when they want to have chaos. When there is no peace, when there is no order, when there's individuals like those two hillbilly rednecks. That when the law does not stop them, he will ensure to bring some kind of peace. Because the truth is, all those years ago, he is the one that called the police on them. Letting them know their location so they could be taken down. Unable at the age to do it himself, he used the authorities. Going out back of the motel thinking he would be safe from all of the craziness. The two of them, they go out Bonnie and Clyde style, but reversing the vehicle, they go through the motel. And in doing so, they crash directly in front of him. We see Chris snuff out whatever life is left of them. He gave them peace. And so with her final question, she has to ask, did you kill your parents as well? And he tells her that he didn't. That though that was his first introduction into what the world is. And she doesn't believe him, but he really has nothing to lie about. After everything he has said today, he has no reason to lie about that. But that letter his parents wrote, that was the most illuminating thing for him. Because reading through that very long catalog of human failures, the ill-advised investments, financial humiliation, infidelity, disinheritance, his mother and stepfather, they had only known torment. And with their death, they finally found their peace. And as he gets up to leave, he lets her know, think about everybody's troubles, their frustrations, their inadequacies, their dreads. All of these people, my parents included, they came to the conclusion that they wanted to end their life. This is their way of finding peace in this world. And so he came to the conclusion that death equals peace. And if she were to look around exactly where they are, in this cemetery, surrounded by the dead, how can you not say that they are at peace? That they have finally found that peace that they have always wanted. And that will be the end of this issue. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments. I think a couple times I may have said Christopher Smith's father. I in fact meant stepfather. His stepfather and his mother, as well as his siblings, had all died through means of brutal homicide suicide. But I think this is a great introduction for people that don't really know the character and we're really getting an opportunity to learn more about his backstory. Find out really where he came from, the true upbringing that, that made him the person he is. That built his psyche into this insanity that anyone would look at it and automatically admit him into a psychiatric hospital. The only reason he's not is because he has built up a very great skill set of making sure people die when the government needs them to die. I really am enjoying this comic so far. The artwork, you know, it's so-so. It's but the story, it really is good. And I'm excited to see where they go from here. When it comes to the HBO show, I'm not that thrilled about it. They really, you know, James Gunn, he makes a joke of like everything he makes. And I wasn't hating Guardians of the Galaxy stuff. But when it comes to, to Peacemaker, I think he just, he's absolutely butchering the character. At least that's my opinion. I, I'm just not a fan of it. It definitely got some good laughs in it, but it, it, it's really summed up to just a freaking joke. So for me, it's been really disappointing up to this point. So I'm excited this comic has come out and we really get to dive into a more different aspect of the character than what we are seeing in the live action version. But yeah, let me know your thoughts, let me know your theories, if you have not yet, do me a favor, hit that sub button, hit that notification bell, make sure you're not missing any of the awesome content that we have coming out, and until the next breakdown.